一分钟准备。One minute countdown. 一分钟准备。So, like you mentioned, some of the power lines will be retreated from that umbilical tower. Fifty seconds, like we heard. To the vehicle itself. So right now, all powers are in the Long March 2F carrier rocket itself. Itself. And you can see the robotic arms retreating. Thirty seconds. And all connections are cut off. Twenty second. The rocket is now on its own, about to take its first step into space. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Pitch over. Yes, it's now 20 seconds after the launch. It is pitch over to fly along Earth horizon. The signal from the optical radar is normal, and the telemetry data shows long normal. Uh, this is a camera from the vehicle itself. You can see the uh, two of the two bo boosters. Okay, the four boosters that yeah. will be separated from the main body of that uh, rocket in about 155 seconds. Yes, the first separation will be that of the boosters. Looking from the trajectory of that rocket, mm. Professor Yang, looking from the trajectory of that rocket, um, what can you tell us? Well, uh, from this video, it is very normal. And the first critical point is the separation of the four uh, liquid rocket boosters. Mm. Uh, you can see that uh, maybe from this uh, camera, from the, the view from the uh, launch vehicle itself. And uh, it is different from the launch of Shenzhou Space Ship. The first one will be the uh, jettison of the e e emergency escape tower. Mm. Mm. Then the second step will be the separation of the boosters. So that's the difference. So if we're launching a manned mission, the separation of the escape tower will mean that it everything is near. Yes. Now the separation is near. Everything is normal so far. All right, we're seeing the boosters Oh, separate. successfully separated. Great. Successfully separated from the oh, launch. You can see the four small light points mm. are the four boosters being jettisoned. 155 seconds. And the first stage is separated successfully. Great. That means uh, we are now 160 seconds into the launch. Yes. The first two steps, the boosters, and the first stage works very normally. Now it's the role of the second stage. Mm. Now it is the second stage rocket mm. engine start. You can see the video, the camera from the inner side of the uh, second stage, and we can see the normal condition of the rockets. Uh, we have one main engine of the second, second stage. Oh, this is a, a video from the payload bearing inside it. And the next critical step will be the uh, separation or jettison of the payload fairing because uh, the attitude is already very high and it do not need any protection. Mm, the nose cone is used to protect the spacecraft from uh, against pressure and aerodynamic heating during launch through an atmosphere. 
Oh, the tracking is normal. There's always something exciting about seeing an image like this after launch of that distant vehicle uh, bursting into space, bursting out of the atmosphere. Yeah. All we can see is this pinpoint of light yeah, on our screen, right? Yeah, a pixel of light. <laughs> but we know what's happening up there. We can see clear images because we have cameras on board the launch vehicle. Mm. And also the Beijing Aerospace Command and Control Center has all the data. Absolutely. And you see that's the, the flame of the second stage rocket. It has one major engine and four vernier engines. The vernier engines are very small to control its attitude. Mm. And the report from the front uh, tell us that the uh, telemetry data is normal and the status is normal. Now this image is coming out from the Beijing Aerospace Command and Control Center. Uh, this is a 3D this, this is a simulation. Uh, simulation. Yes, this uh, is but a simulation. it represents the current status of the launch vehicle. So this whole process will take uh, about 580 mm. seconds. That's yeah, less than 10, 10 minutes. Yeah, less than 10 minutes time. And the second stage, uh, it has uh, uh, less uh, thrust than the first stage, but it works m much longer than the first stage. And you see from the camera that the, uh, the burning is very normal. So how many monitoring stations are... Um Many. Uh, you, have, uh, you have listened from the report that uh, we have monitoring st uh, stations in Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center and also in Guinan, in Shanxi province. And also we have uh, that uh, in Qingdao and Taiyuan uh, in these cities. So they all report. They all have report and uh, they all receive the telemetry date. So it's like a triangular um, positioning of that. Exactly. And they can be recognized as backup of each other, so we can ensure to receive the data normally. What about the boosters and the first stage rockets? Will they be burned out during? Uh, uh, it will be dropped to the mainland of China, but in uh, in area which is not heavily populated, so it is not dangerous. Mm. We often concern about, for instance, well, these boosters and first stage engine will partly burn out during um, the falling period in the atmosphere, and sometimes we even fear about s space garbage that are scattered around the space. But luckily, this is not um, not yet into orbit; it's not beyond orbit space trash. So, Qingdao USB, Ah, Qingdao station have captured the signals of the vehicle. Mm. It is a report. USB, so we are now seeing a seven minutes into the launch. So three USB, minutes to go Qingdao, until we can tell whether the Tiangong 2 space lab has entered its pre-programmed orbit or not. And the next uh, uh, critical step will be the shutdown of the main engine. Mm. And after that, the four volume engines will continue to work to adjust the orbit very accurately. Oh, the main engine is shut off. Mm. Great. What does this main engine shut off mean? Uh, it means that it already provided enough energy for the uh, uh, spacecraft to its uh, final orbit, but maybe not uh, very uh, accurate in, in time, enough. So the four small warning engines will work continually. Look, you can see the, the, the flames. Mm. Uh, so uh, with this adjustment, it, the, the final orbit will be very accurate. So it will adjust the position as well as trajectory. Yes, and you can see that it is near the eastern coast of China. This time the orbit is higher than before, and it is seen as a normal um, orbit height, orbit, al orbit altitude for yes, a future space station. This because, yes, as you, you, you mentioned, because we will test the uh, technical status uh, near the similar to that of the future space station. It will higher than the former uh, missions. Now this is a camera from the uh, to the front of the uh, carrier vehicle, uh, carrier rocket, and you can see the uh, Tiangong Space Laboratory from this camera. 
So and less final... than one minute to go before we can tell whether the Tiangong 2 space lab will enter its orbit or not. And from the audio that we're hearing from various supervision stations around the country, everything is normal so far. Yes. And from this camera, we can see the separation of the payload. Oh, the space tracking ships have found the Tiangong. From the simulation image that we've just seen um, on the left-hand side of the screen. Oh, great, the separation. Mm. This is a separation. Mm. So from both the Zhouquan Satellite Launch Center so and the, the Beijing Aerospace Command and Control yes. Center. What does that applause mean? Uh, the separation means that the task of the carrier vehicle has been accomplished. Mm. That is great. And the next critical step will be the uh, extension of the solar panels. Uh, it, it, if it can be unfolded normally, mm. the uh, electric power supply will be ensured for the space vehicle. So the launch vehicle of the Long March 2F carrier rocket has fully completed. Yes. Now the Tiangong 2 is on its own, can I say that? Yes, It'll absolutely. rely on its solar, pa solar panels and its battery on board to power its movement. This is a simulation which represents the stage. It is a ground track of the uh, Tiangong 2 laboratory. Now you can see it is uh, in the uh, coverage of the Qingdao and the uh, tracking ship, Yuan Wang, Yuan Wang Fa. This is now um, off the coast of China's east coast. Mm -hmm. I think we are about to know whether this um, first stage of this mission is successful or not? Absolutely, the launch itself is successful. Uh, just uh, next we should confirm that the uh, space lab itself is mm -hmm. Everything is normal so far. The tracking signal is normal. So, Mr. Johnson, looking at this whole process so far, uh, what's your major takeaway from this? Well, I've been watching space launches, rocket launches yeah, for a long time. Yeah, certainly. I, I remember Glenn, John Glenn's program. I remember the, uh, the Apollo program and so on, watching that as a board. Now, mm, the solar panel has been successfully Unfolded. Unfolded. It stretch out. This is a simulation image at the Beijing Aerospace Command and Control Center showing that the solar panels has been successfully unfolded. That's Go on, Mr. Johnson. So, uh, I guess my point is that uh, uh, the excitement that this kind of a project generates among a younger generation that's interested in what's out there, what the, what the uh, space program can provide in the way of uh, 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 new new ways of looking at things, new new uh, information, new ex uh, scientific experimentation, and so on. Uh, that kind of a uh, uh, interest is, I suppose, right now being generated around China among young Chinese students uh, in the same way that it's been generating interest around the world for decades in other countries. Looking at this launch now, uh, Mr. Johnson, are you seeing it with an excitement or some yeah, sure. kind of a critical thinking? Well, the, like I said, uh, for I, I, I like to think about it as in terms of its value to the younger generation. Mm. Now, we know that uh, 
there's a group of Hong Kong students who have uh, entered a design experimentation contest, and their experiments will be performed on Tian Gong too. They're all watching this very carefully, and uh, it's exciting to think about what the what these uh, students are are experiencing now as they watch their space lab take off and go into orbit. So every space launch no matter where it is, no matter who's watching, what country is sponsoring it or whatever, I, I think is a valuable uh, contribution to education, to the science community, and very valuable for young people who are looking ahead, looking to the future, and are interested in not only space, but science in general. Mm. This is certainly an inspiration for children here in China and as well as all over the world. Such kind of missions is always an inspiration, not only to, not only to children, but also to the general public. Sure. Absolutely. If you, if you think of one of the, one of the um, scientific experiments Mima. that's going to be on this Tiangong 2, uh, the gamma ray burst um, experiment involving an instrument called POLAR, P-O-L-A-R, mm. that mm. instrument designed by Swiss, Polish, and Chinese scientists is going to look at these distant and tremendous explosions uh, that perhaps will help us understand more about the creation of the universe, the Big Bang. Uh, these gamma ray bursts are not well understood. And so whether, whether you believe in a creator, a Jehovah, a new uh, mm -hmm. whatever, uh, or you don't believe in a creator, it's still an exciting thing to think about uh, what the uh, scientists will be able to detect from these distant bursts of energy, these tremendous rapid bursts uh, called gamma ray bursts. So uh, although I'm not, no expert in gamma ray bursts, I imagine that the physicists who are interested in this are now watching this carefully and will be watching Tiangong 2's experimentation and the, and the results that come of it. And then you can think about what the physicists of the future uh, the high schoolers who are interested in physics are uh, thinking about and how they may be able to not only uh, dream about how the universe was uh, formed but also about how they can use that information to, uh, in, in their uh, endeavors to uh, advance science, to advance commercial application of science and so on. It is always a, a debate between whether we should spent the money on space programs or we should spend the money on alleviating poverty for instance. Professor Yang, what's your defense? Uh, well yes, uh, I also heard this kind of debates and uh, many people think that it is not necessary to pay the money yeah. in space programs and right. should do more things uh, for the common lives. Uh, but I should say that the common life is closely connected to the space technology and without space technology, common life cannot be so good at, at the present stage. And because the return rate of space investment is very high, uh, as Ms. Yeah. Ping has already announced yesterday, the return rate of the China space program is uh, 10 or 12 to 1. That means if uh, we invest 1 yuan in uh, China Man space program, we will have a totally return in uh, our society about 10 to 12 yuan. So you can see uh, with these returns, we will be more confident to solve the problems in our society. So I think uh, it is a good choice, it is a good, de uh, it is the right de decision to uh, pay most uh, attention to these kind of space programs and do more things in these kind of technologies. At the left hand side of the screen we're seeing the command center at Beijing Aerospace Command and Control Center. People there are carefully monitoring data coming out from various observation stations uh, that are scattered around the country to monitor the position as well as trajectory of the Tiangong 2 space lab.
No, according to the data received from the Beijing Aerospace Command and Control Center, right now, have already into the pre-programmed orbit, and all the data and already sent out to all the related observation set, and everything follow the plan way. The Changjiang 5, Changjiang 5, or received the data and order. Shuguang, and Yinghe, and Tiangong. Tiangong reported CEA orbit injection is normal. So those names that we've just heard are observation stations, right? Uh, no, uh, some of them are the subsystems of these the whole mission. For instance, uh, Tiangong means uh, space laboratory system, system. The team will monitor all the uh, telemetry data and to judge whether it is normal or not. Okay, well, let's listen in. Now let's welcome the General Commander and Minister of Zhang Youxia from China Military Commission to declare the launch result. Dear officers, um, commanders, according to the report from Beijing Aerospace Command and Control Center, the Tiangong 2 operates normally and the orbit injection fulfilled the requirement and the solar panel also stretched out. Now I would like to declare the launch mission of Tiangong 2 Space Lab has achieved a complete success.